right, hey guys, it's me, Stormy Grace, and I'm so excited to have you guys at another Eat and Greet. That's the official name for the series I've decided. And this week we have got Heather Eland with us, and we are going to talk about medical astrology and the immune system tonight. So I hope you guys have been getting excited watching the watch page, and we're excited to be here with you. So welcome, 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 Heather. It's so nice to have you. Yeah, thank you. It's so nice to be here. And thank you so much for doing this. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Yeah, this is, you know, I feel like even as astrologers and we're out here and we're in front of people, it's nice to show our communities that we're growing too and we're trying new things and we're, you know, getting as uncomfortable and then getting to meet new people and collaborating. I feel like it's a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but you get to like come and have a beverage or a snack with another astrologer and the whole tribe. That's a super great little moment. So here's to our, here's to our little eat and drink. <laughs> yes. Oh, what a great, that's an amazing mug. That's so great. Yeah. Mine's Jake a the dog from Adventure Time. <laughs> Anyone who is also an adult that watches children's television shows, I guess. <laughs> I totally get it. That's awesome. I know mine says hustle juice. I'm like, and it's tea, <laughs> which is so funny. It's just tea. So brilliant. Okay, some housekeeping before we jump in and start to talk about this, you guys, tonight. You can still get signed up until Sunday for the 65,000 subscriber gift, which is four sessions of basic astrology lessons for 20 bucks. And my students from the 101 and 102 classes will be in their teaching. So it's your people. It's part of the tribe. Come in. They're going to premiere their skills. It's absolutely brilliant. And I will definitely be there as the lifeguard on duty <laughs> to help explain things as well. So if you've been wondering about these basics, how do you look at that chart? How do you get even kind of a feel for what's going on around it? Come and join us for sessions. It's going to be awesome. And that's in the description box down below. All right, man, are you ready to you ready to do this? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Medical astrology. This is an interesting time. We're in quarantine time. And first and foremost, before we even jump in here, neither Heather nor myself practice fear-based astrology. So we're going to talk about the real world tonight. We're going to talk about the system. We're going to talk about maybe even some things that come up with media. But everything we're talking about, we're going to, first of all, stay out of the opinion of it. We're going to be looking at the astrology of it. And this is not the place in the space for fear. So if this is something that has just got you lit up and you're not wanting to hear about it anymore, maybe take a pause from this video, but there's no fear to come in this video. That's just not what we're about. That said, we are inside. We are in quarantine. Some people are starting to go back out. Mm -hmm. This pandemic has brought health and how we do health at a global level, how we do things at a community level, and how we do health inside of our own homes and bodies to the surface. And so tonight we're going to focus on the astrology of the, the immune system. How do we use medical astrology that way? What suggestions do we have for you in order to take opportunity to really boost your own personal immune system during this time and beyond? Our medical system is absolutely changing. If you look at some of the astrology, we've got a stellium of planets happening in Capricorn and everybody's about to retrograde back into Capricorn. Even our medical systems, our hospitals, our structures are changing. So we will need to come back to a fair amount of natural medicine if you're not able to just go to your regular hospital and get the care you need. So we've got some tips and tricks for you tonight and just some learning as well. So how do you use your medical astrology? I know this is a focus you're bringing out, Heather, and I'm so excited for you. So, but tell us, how do you interact with your medical astrology? So um, with medical astrology, this is something I've pretty much been studying since I started studying astrology. I started studying astrology about, what would it be now, almost 10 years ago. Um, and around that time, I also started to become very sick with a chronic illness. I had chronic fatigue syndrome. I was very, I just felt like crap all the time, to be honest. Yeah. And, um, you know, I went to mainstream doctors. I was still very embedded in that system and they didn't really have answers for me. They mostly just scared me, you know, and told me that they couldn't help me or they would give me the names of different 
um, autoimmune conditions and you know they would send me on my way and say that you might have this and you know there's nothing we can do about it and then I'd like search it online and you know I, it would be scary it's like oh I'm only gonna get worse awesome oh. so I started to look to alternatives then and that's also around the time that I started to um, you know become aware of astrology and started to study astrology and so as soon as I learned medical astrology was a thing I started to um, study medical astrology and I should mention that this was when I was in grad school for clinical psychology and so my background's in psychology and so my approach to astrology has predominantly been very psychological and so my approach to medical astrology is very similar because I have studied a lot of mind-body therapies and um one of the things that I really like to look at is the way that uh, physiological illnesses and symptoms that people are experiencing are connected to um, different first off, obviously astrological alignments, but how those are connected to different psychological patterns, behavioral patterns, um, environmental influences, things that you might not even realize are connected to this uh, physical expression of illness might actually be contributing to that illness. And so uncovering those layers and understanding that everything is connected, there's interconnectedness between all things in our experience. And to understand how these things are connected and why they're connected and what we can do to change that even on that psychological and emotional level um, can really free up a lot of energy and create a lot of healing. And so, you know, typically what I do with um, a client for medical astrology is they'll come to me. I don't diagnose. I'm not a, a doctor. Um, I'm not even like a licensed psychologist or anything like that. Um, so I, I don't diagnose people. Medical astrologers typically don't diagnose people. What we do is um, we look at patterns, right? And so somebody comes to us, they say, I have this illness. Illness. my doctor says I'm diagnosed with this I have these symptoms I will first off first and foremost look at their chart and um, see which patterns should correspond to that you know and what might be contributing the second thing I'll do is ask them when was the onset of their symptoms in the time of diagnosis if they had a diagnosis or any significant events related to that illness uh, typically what will happen is transits and other um, activators with different timing techniques will show up that will um, activate those patterns that you would expect to be associated with that illness, which not only confirms that those patterns are the issue, but it provides a layer of information that you might not otherwise have. And so a lot of times you'll see things where there's a pattern in the chart that's related to maybe some sort of crisis or trauma. And people don't seem to make this connection a lot of times where that was activated. And so they had this period where um, they were, were under a lot of stress. They had a lot of trauma. They had a lot of change in their life at the exact same time that they started to manifest this illness. And when you see these correspondences and you start to bring this up to people, they start to, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. You know, I had that big move. That's when my... Um, relationship started to go sour and I you know filed for divorce and like all these things it, it somehow like doesn't click that these things could be connected and even in um, like Western medicine and in you know the research that we have we know that periods of stress and trauma contribute to physiological illness one of the biggest predictors of phys physiological illness is actually psychological stress um, within the past year or two and so you know these things will act and a lot of times these things are activating energies or um, sensitivities that are left over from childhood experiences too and that's really what I like to look at because these connections once you realize them it's like oh my gosh there's a layer to this there's a reason why i'm doing even all the right things like i'm eating all the right foods i'm taking all the supplements i'm seeing all the right alternative you know practitioners and doing what i'm told and it's not helping you know it's because there are other factors there that maybe weren't considered yeah absolutely and i love that because i know that the standpoint that i come from especially right now is this place of stress and fear and anxiety and it just activates the system it like literally it's like not it's like scaring yourself straight except for you never get straight do you know what i mean yes. and we've got the influences outside of us immediately and a big one is is media and what we're consuming and what we're you know bringing into our space in that way and i don't think that all media is bad I want to be clear on that as well, but, you know, we're getting ready to have Venus come retrograde in Gemini, and I feel like 
value? What's the value of what you're consuming? Because it is having a direct correlation and effect on your immune system, on the astrology of your systems, because it's keeping you tense. And that is not a place for your body. Your body uses so much energy to try and calm you down right mm -hmm. to try and you know it's at that fight or flight place as well so this is absolutely phenomenal i think it is in fact the number one place that we start yes. when we're looking at the solution part right well ca what can we do to make adjustments immediately to bring some of the stress and the anxiety down and then we can dig back into that astrology and see okay this is this is my natural makeup and and this is where this is going and, and how we can pull some opportunities out of that so absolutely brilliant yeah and I, honestly that's like right in alignment with my background like all of my studies were around stress response anxiety things like that even like my my master's thesis was like about stress response and like you know the female menstrual cycle and hormones and all these things and so like that's my area of interest and i didn't realize at the time how important that actually is to your overall health right that's the biggest contributor to health issues because when we look at these things like in uh the traditional sort of academic you know mindset we're compartmentalizing everything so it's like the brain is separate from the body is separate from this is separate from that when everything is working synergistically and your mind is super powerful and so it, you can literally shift your immune system by shifting your mindset and by calming the nervous system by activating that parasympathetic nervous system and down regulating the sympathetic nervous nervous system, that fight or flight response, yep. the sympathetic nervous system, when it's activated, it shuts down the immune system. I mean, it really dampens the immune system because really what um, your body is preparing for is fight or flight. It's uh, sending energy to the major, major muscle groups in your body so that way you can run or so you can fight or, you know, sometimes people freeze, it's fight, flight or freeze now. Um, but you know, it's, it's, the energy is concentrated in a different way. So your digestion stops, um, you know, you or it slows down at least, um, your immune system is suppressed and inhibited. Your mental function is actually inhibited. So your cognitive function, um, you know, is depleted and it's not necessarily, um, functioning optimally. So you can have memory issues, especially, and actually, um, creates volume loss in the hippocampus, which is the episodic memory center of the brain. And so when you're chronically stressed and you chronically have this fight or flight response activated, your immune system is chronically weakened, your brain isn't functioning optimally, your memory isn't going to be as sharp. There's so many things that it causes. And that really is like the, the best place to start, start, especially right now, because with that Pluto energy involved with this, it's like Pluto, Ooh. Jupiter, Saturn, the first, and when Mars came in, the first thing I said on my YouTube channel is like, y yes, you know, there's a virus, but the biggest threat right now is fear, 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 fear. You're going to see people overreacting, pushing fear. It's going to be shoved down your throats right now. And people are going to be way more reactive to these things than they normally even would be. Absolutely. And yeah. And so I think that that was priming people, you know, to... It was priming people for a lot of different things, but I think one of the things that that can contribute to is a dysfunctional immune system. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And it's interesting, right? Because we're also, we've got this Gemini energy that is up, it's on the scene now. We've got Venus activated over there. The nodes are getting ready to move, right? And we put this whole story together in the astrology. And when the fear is going, one of the first things that we do is hold our breath, right? Like we hold in and here we are. We've got this situation going on in the world that immediately attacks the lungs. It's dark, it's dank, it's cold in the lungs and we're holding our breath. You know what I mean? So we've already got this like medical astrological response to what we're bringing in here physiologically, um, psycho psychologically as well. So it's interesting to see when we turn and we look into the astrology, how these pieces come together, right? I'm like, man, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited for people with the nodal movement to do some relearning about how they breathe, how they eat, what they consume, because we're all going to be in that portion of it together, especially, you know, if I'm holding my breath, I'm certainly not paying attention to my gut. There's no way. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing too, that you bring up because with that North node moving into Gemini, like breath work can be a really powerful <sighs> remedy. And in general, it is one of the things I always um, tell my clients who have like Mercury sun conjunctions, especially they tend to overthink things. They tend to <laughs> like their brains are just, they don't turn off. Right. And they can uh, think themselves anxious, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like nothing's going on, you know, externally, they can think themselves to the point of exhaustion even. And um, one of the things that's really great for those people who have that strong mercury activation is actually doing like really intensive breath work. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, with that Gemini energy, it's the same thing. Gemini rules the lungs. So, you know, get breathing, look into like Wim Hof. He's like huge right now. Um, and his like breath work and, and breath therapies and things like that for enhancing the immune system. And it's been proven through, you know, research that this actually does enhance the immune system and his, his techniques are really powerful. So you can look into things like that, um, you know, as one way of doing it. And another thing too, that's really important is, um, is movement, right? Because when we think about the immune system, the immune system is ruled by Mars. Uh, and so when we're talking about medical astrology, the parts of the body are ruled by the, the astrological signs, right? And so you have Aries as the head, Taurus as the throat, Gemini as the lungs, the upper extremities. You have, um, what's after that? Uh, so Leo is the heart. <laughs> Virgo is the digestive system and the enteric ner nervous system. So like the nervous system connected to the gut. Um, you have uh, Libra, which is the kidneys. You have um, Sagittarius, which is the liver and also like the hips and the thighs. And you Scorpio have, is over that reproductive space. Yeah. Scorpio, yeah, is the reproductive system, the genitals. Um, you have Sag Sagittarius, you have Capricorn, which is the skeletal system, um, the containers of the body, the skin, the hair, all of that, but it's also the knees. You have Aquarius, which is the shins and ankles and also the um, electrical circuitry of the body. And then you have um, Pisces, which is the feet, right? <laughs> and also has to do with like liquids in the body and things like that too. Um, and so these are all the different body parts, but the planets rule functions of the body. Okay body parts yeah so like the actions and so the action of the immune system and also the adrenals which has to do with that fight or flight response <laughs> um, those are all mars things right and so one thing that you can do to activate your immune system is to move right mars is action it's physical movement it's your muscles and um, the way that you want to move your body is going to be associated with your mars placement in the sign uh, that even the house placement could have something to do with it and especially the aspects between planets. And that'll also show you, do you have like a strong immune system? Do you have to work a little bit harder to keep yourself healthy? What does that look like for you, right? It tells a story about your overall health and wellness and what your body needs to keep that immune system going. Yeah. And I'm thinking about that too is, you know, I was thinking about your sun mercury, um, conjunction and that's just rough but <laughs> it's so busy it's a, it's so much thinking you know even when i say it i'm like yes all the thinking right but i'm thinking too you know our friends that are sun moon ascendant gemini energy the lungs are gonna have more of a um it could be a weaker point depending on you know that particular placement especially if you got it at that sixth house or you've got mercury on the sixth house so if you see that in your chart you know, you're going to want to definitely do movements that force you to do air-based therapies as well. I think of yoga is, is a phenomenal one or just doing movement where you're going to have to be doing deep breathing, right? The Kalabati breathings, things like that. Or the other Mercury energy, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, Virgo, the mm -hmm. gut, you're already predisposed to having the gut as a challenging part but also I, i'm thinking about i guess yoga is seems to be the correlating thought that i'm having here is stay warm bring in the breath to help the body rid itself of any of the the pathogens that are in there that are not needed right yeah absolutely and i mean all forms of yoga include breath work so i think that's a really important thing that people can be doing um especially you know like you said if you have that mercurial energy in your sixth house or maybe mercury with mars you know breathing and incorporating that into the movement very intentionally obviously you're breathing when you're moving but like <laughs> intentional breath work as a part of movement and also people who have um you know mars in pisces or mars with uh, neptune do much better with like flowy or like spiritual 
spiritual forms of movement. And so incorporating that and that sort of energetics to the movement that you're doing, like yoga or something like that, that can be really good for those people. Um, you can still do yoga and breath work and have like more of an intensive um, exercise if you're doing like power yoga or something like that. But that just brings to mind like people kind of doing things that are more flowy and that yeah. are more about the spiritual aspects and the connection that you're getting there. Um, you know, that I think that could be good for a lot of people. I think so as well. And, and thinking about that immune lymphatic system in there, um, yeah. Pisces energy, as well, the fluids of clearing, you know, clearing out the, all of, all of that lymphatic drainage. So if you have sun, moon, or ascendant in Piscean energy or Pisces energy, that first sixth house space, you're not going to, you're going to want something probably more flowy as well. You're not like looking to be pushed on, right? Because your, um, your immune system in general will be kind of a, a weaker spot for you. So doing things that push and strain may not feel exciting to your system. They may feel a little bit stressful. It could actually be harmful, yeah, for some yeah. people. And like, so an example, that Pisces energy or that Neptune energy, like I have Mars square to Neptune in my in my birth chart. And so I had a dysfunctional immune system. And um, one of the things that used to make me really sick, I developed like an exercise intolerance. And so my body would actually respond to exercise in a way that was like over the top. It saw exercise as like a threat almost. It's kind of- right. it's, the hard thing to explain, but like your limbic system has a lot to do with this, which has to do with the sympathetic nervous system um, and your fight or flight response. But basically your, your body, your brain gets programmed um, to cause your body to create a physiological response to certain stressors. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that response can be overreactive. And one of the things that I would be overreactive to is like fatigue and like, you know, exercise and things like that. And so doing really strenuous exercise would actually be really harmful to me. I would be like laying out on the couch for like several days. It would take me like a few days to recover. I don't have that issue anymore. Um, but you know, if you see something like that in the chart, strenuous exercise can actually push you over the edge, it does activate the sympathetic nervous system. And if you already have this dysregulation and this like sort of um, strange immune response, because with Neptune or with Pisces, it confuses the immune system. The immune system is reacting to things in ways that it shouldn't. Um, you think about Pisces, you think about Neptune, it's confusion. Um, and so that's something to definitely take into consideration for certain people. Whereas others might need really strong, like physical activity. They might need something really intense. Like um, if you have maybe Mars in Scorpio or Mars with Pluto, you want something really focused, really intense, and like you can really hone in on it and obsess over it and, you know, take yes. it maybe to extremes. <laughs> yes. Well, and we laugh. Like I, I laugh on this channel all the time because my husband is an Aries and mm -hmm. he just, I mean, and we're in quarantine. So it's like competitive um, laundry. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> like, like, right? Like his, he just needs to burn off this fire and, and move and he needs to be winning at something. So the low and flow, slow, um, flowy things are actually a little bit harder for him. So yeah. if you can identify with that, that might be something up your alley. So since I have you as the guest, I would love to hear more about your take on Mars throughout, whether it be the signs, the houses, however you break it down. I would love to hear more about that. Um, well, you know, in terms of Mars and like your overall health and like the immune system and all that, just to kind of go a little bit deeper into that, Mars has a lot of different associations, right? And so it's not just physical activity. Like Mars rules your ability to defend yourself, like physically. It's your anger. It's your aggression. It's whether or not you go on the defense, whether or not you can stand up for yourself. And some people, um, you know, have an experience in their childhood, especially where they feel like they were beaten down or they couldn't stand up for themselves. A lot of times that translates in adulthood to, um, you know, an inability to stand up for yourself and an inability to express anger or to express extreme emotion. Um, it can cause people to shut down or become depressed rather than lashing out um, or expressing their anger even in a healthy way. And this also can translate to your body's defenses not working properly, right? It like literally translates to the body's defense mechanisms, the immune system not functioning optimally. So you can look at all sorts of different layers of things. Mars is also, you know, when it's dysfunctional or when it's, um, you know, aspected in certain ways can be associated with a depressed mood, not necessarily mm -hmm. clinical depression, but depression and like kind of boredom almost where you just feel like I, I don't care about any of this. And like, how do you get the motivation to keep going? 
right? And so you have to look at all these factors and that depletes your, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling not optimal in terms of your mood, that depletes the immune system as well. Um, and that's another thing to consider. The final thing that um, before we move on to like the signs and the different aspects, is Mars rules phys physical expression of sexuality, yes. right? And we know that a healthy sex life boosts your immune system and certain forms of sexuality and certain activities actually enhance your immune system more than others. Um, one thing that maybe people don't really know about, uh, maybe this is a little too much here, but... <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, um, you know, the vagus nerve is actually stimulated by certain types of orgasm in females. And so an internal orgasm, like a G-spot activation, would actually stimulate the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve regulates the immune system and also the sympathetic nervous system, right? And so having a healthy sex life and healthy sexual expression, um, and especially if you want to really enhance your, your immune system, you know, using specific techniques there. <laughs> can actually contribute to a healthy immune system too. So there are all these Mars layers that you wouldn't <laughs> think about there, right? Right, absolutely. But I think it's like even, even through the astrology lens, the psychological lens, the spiritual lens, when we address the whole person as the whole person, I think sometimes it's like, oh, I just need to get an extra workout in or I need to whatever. And it's like, maybe you just need some nice O faces, whether you do it or someone else does it. Don't discount that you're your body was built to literally help itself, right? And we can find all of the healing in these many different expressions of everything that's going on in this whole little container. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I clearly support. <laughs> okay, so why don't we talk about Mars through the different signs so people have an opportunity to identify that in their chart and then also see how things might be stimulated there and what opportunities they can take to boost the immune system through those placements. So if you're not quite at the place where you're ready to do your aspects or anything like that, that's okay. This is exactly for you. And if you are at your aspects, then this is still going to be applicable. And then you can look at, do you have rough aspects made to other planets, like maybe Neptune or maybe even something in your Saturn, but certainly other, other um, placements in the chart. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you the floor. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, let's start with Aries, of course. So Mars and Aries would be, typically, if Mars is in Aries, you're going to have a very strong immune system, but you might be prone to having an overactive inflammatory response. So you might be prone to inflammation. So it's almost like your immune system is um, overdoing it when you're like having some sort of irritation, illness, injury, something like that. And so that is something to kind of be aware of. So if you're already prone to inflammation or if you're having an inflammatory response that's a little bit over the top um, and you're having like a lot of pain or whatever it is, you know, you want to kind of tone it down. Mars and Aries people tend to like really strenuous, really intense, small, short bursts of physical activity. They tend to like things that are more um, even things like martial arts and things like that were yeah. really extreme where they're like fighting someone and they're like letting their um, emotions out through that, which is a healthy way to, you know, express your anger as opposed to arguing with people. Um, <laughs> right? You're just trying to win over people. You're like, we're going to win. Yeah. And like they can kind of over be over the top <laughs> when it comes to being like on the defense and when it comes to arguing their point and things like that too. They can get, they're very direct when they're angry. When they're angry, they're just going to tell you and they're going to express that usually. Um, again, there could be other um, aspects at play that could change that. Um, and so it's kind of like when Mars is in Aries, even though Mars is technically at home and it functions well in Aries, it's almost like too much Aries. It's like an over-the-top energy. And so that's where things can come to a point of imbalance. Also with Mars and Aries, they need to constantly be doing new things and initiating new projects. They're really good at starting things, but maybe not following through. Um, and if they're not doing something new that feels exciting and fresh, they can feel bored, depleted, um, they can fall into a depressed mood. And so if they, if you're a Mars and Aries person and you're feeling like, oh, I'm just so, I don't have the energy, right? I don't want to do this anymore. You need to start something new. Even if, if it's something small, that'll get that energy flowing. It'll get your mood enhanced and it'll get you feeling better. And that will also boost your immune system, right? Um, so it can kind of go both ways, but usually it's kind of more overreactivity with the Mars and Aries. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. 
And so if you're, if you're already having that, maybe don't go and do that extra workout. Maybe don't hit the punching bag that day. <laughs> Right? Like, like maybe that is not going to do it because you are already in a state where it's like heightened, you know, maybe even we talked about this a little bit with Cameron Allen as well as if you are feeling like just you're having this inflammatory experience with that particular placement, maybe try a water activity, yes. right? Like do something like that because if you are in inflammation, it's just too much. So use your other elements to kind of help rebalance what you're doing as well. Do a good earth energy. Oh my God, get a crossword puzzle. Like you still get to win, but then you also get to like ground and it'll kind of help bring some of that, I think, inflammation down, which is obviously going to be key in that immune system. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there are different like herbs and things like that that you can use to kind of cool and calm and reduce the inflammation. Usually you'll know when you're like inflamed, you'll also be kind of inflamed emotionally, like you'll be more irritable <laughs> when you have a lot of inflammation systemically. That's one of the things that I've noticed. You'll also kind of feel foggy and you'll be like foggy and grouchy. <laughs> Yeah. So if that's how you're feeling, maybe you need to kind of calm it down, do a puzzle. Like you said, do something that's low key instead of just like pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah. Okay. How about Mars in Taurus? Where's your Mars, by the way? Mine's actually in Aries, but it's heavily debilitated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so right. I do have that Mars in Aries energy, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of other stuff going on there. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mars in Taurus. Um, so Mars and Taurus would be kind of a more slow moving energy. They tend to like slow, very grounded forms of movement. And that's actually a really good thing to help boost your immune system, to get you feeling good, to get you active because they're slow to move, but once they start moving, they'll keep going. And so it's kind of like taking that first step. So if you are a Mars and Taurus person and you're feeling like sluggish and you're feeling like you don't have the energy to keep going, just get it started. Force yourself to like, if you have like one of those little rebounder trampolines, jump on that for just a minute. After you do that, after you start moving, you'll keep moving. Um, that's a Mars and Taurus thing for sure. Also spending time in nature and movement in nature, like going for a hike, gardening, yard work, whatever it is that's going to get you grounded and connected with the earth through the movement you're doing and just enhancing your immune system through being in nature, which anyone, you know, can benefit from, but Mars and Taurus people in particular really benefit from that earth energy and from like literally earthing, grounding, being in the forest, being in nature, being in the garden. Um, and so those things would be really important. Also for you, food is going to be really important. Food. So, oh, so the food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> food yes <laughs> so um you know using food as a way as medicine right looking at foods that are really nourishing and that will enhance your immune system that's going to be really important for mars and taurus people in particular um and so i think those would be kind of like the biggest things with mars and taurus mars and taurus can tend to they're slow to they're slow to anger but they'll like hold a grudge and so one of the things that I think could be detrimental maybe on a, an emotional or psychological level to the health of a Mars and Taurus person would be harboring, you know, resentment and harboring strong emotions and not expressing them. And even if you have expressed them, holding on to them for like way too long. Um, so finding ways to forgive, forget, let go, that type of thing can also free up a lot of energy emotionally, psychologically. It can reduce that, that stress, that adrenal <laughs> overactivation. Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, when we think about Mars in general, like in terms of his placement, he, this is the opposite placement of that, that Aries kind of embodiment or that Scorpio kind of embodiment that we have. So Mars is not entirely comfortable here because he doesn't quite know what to do. So I always feel like it's really good too for Mars and Taurus people to be social if they can because then they kind of get to ping off of other people's energies just enough while also being in this like slower, relaxed kind of place. So even if you can eat together, mm -hmm. that may be a wonderful sense of like, you know, bringing an encouraging balance in that environment. So it's funny, right? We think immune system, what am I eating? Am I juicing? But I think that people also play a good part in that if that's the characteristic of that placement for you. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of a good segue to Mars and Gemini because Mars and Gemini would need social stimulation very uh, literally <laughs> to help activate the immune system, right? That's, and that's something also that we know through research that activates your immune system. Right now we're in this like era of social distancing, but one of the, one of the biggest predictors of health outcomes in addition to stress is whether or not you have a good social circle, if you have good right. social support, social connections, people who are in isolation who don't have those connections tend to have a poor prognosis, right? So you want to look at those types of things in general. But for a Mars and Gemini person, that's going to be one of the biggest factors to boosting your immune system, social activity, social connection. And right now, if you can't get out there, if you can't go and like interact with people physically, call your friends, constantly be chatting and talking and doing whatever you need to do. Yes, talk, talk, talk. Um, and that's another thing too with the, that Mars in... Gemini energy is that they get bored really easily. Mm -hmm. They need to constantly be starting a lot of different new things. They'll be jumping around from project to project. And, um, you know, if they get bored, they'll feel depressed, depleted, melancholy. And so you need to make sure that you're doing something new and exciting that even if it's on a mental level, will stimulate something. Well, it'll yeah. stimulate your curiosity. It'll get you excited about something. Um, one of the remedies that my medical astrology teacher, Lynn Coiner, gives for Mars and Gemini, if you feel depressed or depleted is to like go out and take a short trip. If you're not able to do that right now, take a mental trip, right? Go explore something really interesting that just gets you going. Um, I think that could be a good way if you can't physically move right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, especially too, because everybody's like in the house, it's like, make sure that your air is yes. good, right? Like use those essential oils, use your aromatherapy because that, it's so interesting with air energies, they catch a scent and it's like, oh, what's that, right? Which is a brilliant expression of the curiosity of air and of Gemini most specifically. Plus you get to, you get to go make some oils. That's not terrible. Yeah, that's an interesting point. And something else too would be like getting like an air purifier. Like, the, like I have what's called the green air machine and that one has like ozone for killing all the pathogens. It has UV lights. So is the air in your home clean? And you could literally just open some windows if you don't have right. for like fancy machines and essential oils. Like it's free to open your windows. It's free yeah. to go outside and like breathe air. So that would actually be, and that, that's one of those things we we're talking about before, the exercising the lungs, intentional breathing exercises would be really yeah. great for Mars and Aries people or Mars and um, Gemini people. And, um, and where's your Mars, by the way? Mars that is in Libra. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm just enough air. Just enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How about Mars in Cancer? This Mars is a in tough spot for Mr. Mars. It is. Um, Mars in Cancer... So this is an interesting one because Mars and Cancer does tend to be a little passive aggressive. They tend to sidestep um, confrontation and that can, that can end up in like resentment, holding on to strong emotions in the body, that type of thing. And so the first and foremost thing that I would say about Mars and Cancer is that you need to be more direct about expressing your anger, your, your distaste for something, you know, not just not be afraid of like disagreements or approaching something head on um, because sometimes things can get stuck there. And I think that that could be a little bit of an issue. Um, you know, Mars in, in, in Cancer kind of needs to go with its um, emotional cycle. So they tend to either be really into something or really not. And sometimes that'll just kind of wax and wane. So it's like at one point they're really into a project and then like the, two days later they're in a different mood and then they just like forget <laughs> it all together. And then they'll come back to it two weeks later and it's like a whole thing. Um, and so it's a little inconsistent, but following those moods, right? When you feel like you're in the mood to do some sort of exercise, when you feel like you're in the mood to socialize, following your moods and taking action on that can be actually helpful, even if it isn't consistent. Um, but I would say Mars in, um, in, in uh, cancer would have a lot of issues related to water and the fluids in the body and infl inflammation, especially of the mucous membranes can be an issue with people who have Mars in cancer. Um, cancer also rules the reproductive organs. And so there could be issues there, um, like in females, especially like the, uh, the uterus and all of that and the breasts. And so you kind of want to kind of take that into consideration. So hom hormonal issues. Hormonals, yeah. yeah specifically. Um, but I would say that there could be like probably inflammation of like the mucous membrane things like that. So you'd want to do things that could actually soothe the mucous membranes and calm that inflammatory response. 
Um, in terms of their immune system, it, it would kind of be a little, you know, all over the place. Like sometimes they might have a really strong immune system and things might be flowing really well. Sometimes it might be a little weaker. And a lot of that, I think, depends on their emotional state. Yeah. And so that emotional component and that mood component, I think, would be especially important for a Mars in, in cancer person. So making sure that you're taking care of yourself emotionally, you're focusing on your emotional comfort zones, you're expressing your emotions appropriately and not just like sidestepping things. That would be the biggest thing that would enhance your immunity. Yeah, absolutely. And I tend to have this experience with Mars and cancer people where they need some snuggles. So they tend to need um, connection and touch and some snuggling and some, you know, all of that good kind of stuff. But the thing that I always caution those placements with is exactly what you're saying, like being direct about it, because it is easy to let the snuggles lead to something else. And then you've never actually addressed the emotional piece. And that is going to be a suppressant in the body. So I think that that's really important too at that social level, you know, get to get a snuggle. You need a snuggle buddy. Yeah. They need like emotional support and they need that system there. And that's true too. Like um, in terms of like their sexual expression, like they need to really be into it and they need to feel good about it and they need to have that emotional connection. If they don't have it, then it's going to be kind of forced and that's not going to be good. Um, and that's not going to boost your immune system. That's going to cause more stress, right? So we talked about that aspect of boosting your immune system. Um, you have to be in the right state if your Mars is in cancer for that, for sure. That's a really good point. Yeah. Okay. How about Mars in Leo? Mars in Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? I just like hear these placements and it like, we each have our own little reaction to it. Yeah, I like Mars and Leo because Mars and Leo is very, um, it's a very enthusiastic energy, right? It's very athletic too a lot of times. When you think about Mars and Leo people, they can be very good athletes. Um, you know, athletic competition can be something that's really good for them. Also Mars and Aries, you know, they, there's a competitive nature there. Um, but like athletic competition, um, to, being athletic to, in a way to kind of like show off, like a lot of yes. people who are like bodybuilders and things like that have a lot of Leo energy, especially Mars or the sun. I've noticed. Um, and so, you know, that could be something where it's like, I want to, you know, get fit to improve my physique and feeling good about the way that you look and the way that your body looks and the way that your body feels is something that could actually enhance your immune system. Right. And so there's, there's that physical component in that maybe showing off when it, when it comes to that. Yeah. <laughs> so well, Mar like, Mars and Aries wants to compete because they like the competition and the warring aspect and the, I'm going to win. Mars and Leo is like, well, I'm competing because I'm good. And I look good. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I recognize for how good they are. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, any form of athletic competition or sports or anything like that would be really great for uh, Mars and Leo people. Mars and Leo is very romantic. Um, you know, that sexual expression would be especially important for Mars and Leo. Um, but they need a little romance. They need a little, you know, fire beforehand. Yeah. A little drama, like a little zhuzh it up. Exactly. Yeah. It's not just you just get in there and do it. It's not a Mars and Aries. <laughs> it's a yeah. Mars and Leo, right? I know Mars and Aries is like, I don't need all of these distractions. Let's Yeah, it's like, let's just go. Let's do it. <laughs> right, right. So in the immune system for this other little fire energy, they too can have um, inflammation issues too, just by the nature of fire. And that's a lot of fire. It's Mars plus sun energy. That is a lot of they, they tend to run really hot too so like um they you know circulation has an association with like leo the sun the heart all of these things mm -hmm. right and so they tend to run really hot they and tend to have really good circulation um but they tend to be kind of sweaty <laughs> yeah, they're moist folk yeah, and so they're another sign that you would want, um, you know, to do things to kind of cool the body, calm the body, that type of thing. Drink some peppermint tea, right? Just like chill out, go and, you know, get some fresh air, go and, you know, go go in some water, do something that's going to be cooling, do something that's going to be calming if you're having a little bit too much of that inflammation. Um, but I don't really see Mars in Leo people really having a lot of immune system issues or health issues. They're typically very strong and healthy um, unless there's something else going on. So, you know, if you have that going for you, then you're probably in a good place. You might just be a little overly hot, a little red, a little sweaty. <laughs> right. You can, you can fix that, right? You can fix that. You just got to kind of, you know, tone it, down. tone it down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. That's um, been pretty much my experience as well. I think just not so much on the immune system issue, but just in general with Mars and Leo, when they do kind of get that depressed stuckness, it's because they're not being creative or they're like not showing up 
you know, and it's, so it's really interesting, but I don't see a lot of immune system issues there either, unless it's aspected to something else. Yeah. And that depressed kind of mood too, like they'll, they'll pull themselves out of it. Like they will themselves out of being depressed. And if they are depressed, they'll deny it. They're like, I'm not depressed. I'm fine. I'm great. And then they'll make it happen. Like they'll make it so. (laughs) So you don't have to worry too much about Mars and Leo people, I would say. (laughs) I don't think too much. Okay. Mars in Virgo. Mars in Virgo. So Mars in Virgo um, can be very critical of themselves. (laughs) Um, that can be kind of an issue. They don't tend to do well with criticism. I mean, that's kind of a thing too. They can be aggressively critical of themselves and other people. Um, but with Mars in Virgo, Virgo rules things like nutrition, right? It rules the gut. It rules the gut, uh, the you know nervous system in the gut. It rules the nervous system in general. Like people who have a lot of Virgo energy tend to run anxious and Mar- Mars in Virgo is kind of a more high strung mm-hmm. energy. Um, and so that would be one where you re- would really want to focus on the nervous system and things that you can do to calm the nervous system. Breath work, of course, is always good, um, but this could be looking at foods and supplements and things like that, that enhance the immune system, but also calm the nervous system. This is someone you would not want to give stimulants to. You would not want them to be drinking a lot of caffeine or eating a bunch of chocolate or something like that. They're already overstimulated. Their adrenals can be overstimulated and like overactive, and that can lead to things like adrenal fatigue, um, you know, if they don't address that and if they are kind of in that high strung state and you know drinking all that caffeine or doing whatever they're doing um so you kind of need things that are calming so looking at herbs that are a little bit more sedating um maybe you know drinking some chamomile tea drinking some um uh some lemon balm or something you know something that's gentle and like calming as opposed to like overstimulating um taking care of your mental health especially not you know overthinking things, not being so self-critical. And um, definitely, I would think there would be a nutritional aspect that could be very helpful to that because there could be inflammation in the gut, um, especially because Mars is inflammation. You have that aspect of the gut being ruled by Virgo. Um, and so, you know, you you want to pay attention to those things. So looking at, you know, sources of inflammation in your diet, um, looking at, um, you know, things, supplements like uh, like taking magnesium and things that can, you know, help support the nervous system and tone it down. Yeah. That would be probably the most helpful. Um, yeah. And I would say that, you know, Mars in Virgo people probably would be more depressed when, uh, or feel like more depleted, more, um, shut down when they're being subject to a lot of criticism, like they, or they could be afraid of criticism and that could inhibit their momentum. It could inhibit their ability to actually face challenges or initiate something. And so that's something that you kind of have to work through on that mental and psychological level in order to get things going again. Um, One thing that Mars and Virgo is really good for is acts of service. And so if you feel like you can't do something for yourself because you're afraid of this, that, or the other thing, or you're overthinking it, um, definitely focusing on helping somebody else that can really uplift your spirits, uplift your mood, right? That's the highest expression of Virgo to show up in service. So I think that could be a good thing, like in terms of an emotional or psychological remedy. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely think because they just need all of the information all of the time, you know what I mean? It is a natural kind of calling to that. So you put Mars with those feet on the ground and you want to find all this information. It's like sometimes you just don't need all of the information because it's too much. I tend to tell people who are air signs just in general, if you can have a day or a time where you hydrate well and you spend some time in a dark room, just being or real low light, that's so good for the nervous system to also just have a, have a come down. So that would probably be absolutely lovely. And I think service for them too is just so good because it gets it, it, it moves it from the mental capacity, right? It's like, I'm just showing up and moving my body for your benefit. And that's it. Yeah. Pretty black and white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is, which is brilliant, I think. Awesome. Okay. Yay. Mars in Libra. <laughs> Mars and Libra. So Mars is technically obviously at its detriment in the sign of Libra. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, one of the things with Mars and Libra is that they really do need that like um, interaction, especially on a one-on-one level, that social connection with other people. Um, And so when they don't have that, that can feel kind of like depleting, depressing, that type of thing. They get their motivation through their interactions with other people. They're more motivated when they're teamed up, right? (laughs) And so if you're not teamed up, then you're not going to feel as motivated. So you have Mars 
Mars in Libra, right? You're connecting with and collaborating with all these people. This is probably really exciting and motivating for you. You're probably getting oh, yeah. a lot of great ideas and you know, stimulating this desire to take new action. Um, that's such a Mars and Libra thing. And especially maybe you were feeling like a little listless or you didn't know what direction to take. And then that you did this, right? And so yeah. that's opening up a bunch of avenues. Yeah. Um, we almost had like 75 different kinds of collaboration, you guys. So <laughs> just these for now. <laughs> Which is the best. Yeah. So if you, you, you know, if you do something like this, collaborate with different people. If you're feeling down, depressed, depleted, reach out to somebody that you care about. Get that balance. Get that interaction with somebody else. Um, this is another, this is an energy where they can get really fired up about injustice or inequality. Um, yes. yes. And so if you're feeling like lack of motivation, that's something that you can focus your attention on, right? How can you create more equality, create more fairness? How can you get behind a cause that's associated with those types of things that might amp you up and motivate you and that stimulates the immune system too it gets you going <laughs> yeah and, and then it's a dance of equality in the body just in general right yeah. where it's like okay am i am i resting enough am i moving enough there i feel like there is yes. just always this sense of looking for the balance when you have mars and libra you know that absolutely and um you know mars and libra does need kind of like balanced <laughs> physical activity not too strenuous not too extreme not too like kind of relaxed it's not like a flowy piscean energy where you're just kind of like doing flowy movements or you know whatever tai chi or something like that and it's not like you're going to extremes you're going to do like you know um really extreme mountain climbing or like you know <laughs> skydiving or extreme sports or something like that you need something more balanced and something a little bit more in between and partnering up with somebody for physical activity can be mm -hmm. really helpful too like you need like a workout partner Partner, uh, to, to keep you going um, and I would say that especially because you know when you're talking about Libra you're talking about the kidneys, the kidneys. and so you want to support kidney health because that's going to help first off with detoxification it's going to keep your body clean of toxins you might be more prone to having like UTIs inflammation in the kidneys and the urinary tract system and that type of thing and so you just want to make sure that you're cognizant of that and you know you can eat certain foods like cranberries and, and things like that, that you know that can help to support that system. You can drink things like dandelion leaf tea. There are so many different things that you can use that can support the kidneys. Um, and so you can do things like that. So thinking about kidney health and inflammation in the kidneys. And when your body, when your kidneys aren't functioning properly, they're not filtering the blood, they're not cleansing right. the system. And so you're going to be more um, burdened by toxins and your body's going to be focusing on that. And that does actually impact the immune system as well. Hugely, so hugely. If the drainage in any capacity of your body is not happening the way that it should, the immune system, like, you know, it has to send in the troops to fight off these invaders. And, mm -hmm. and when your body is in that heightened state of, of fighting off the invaders, like, you know, if the initial guys come out, that's great because they're just meant to say, hey, something's not going right here, let's adjust this. But when the big guns have to come out because there is chronic situation or chronic issue going on, this mm -hmm. is so taxing on the immune system. It's beautiful that it is built to keep us safe from these invaders, but we also kind of want to avoid having to have the big guns come out if we don't need to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so exhausting. <laughs> okay, Le uh, Mar I was going to say Libra and Scorpio, but that's not a thing. I just made that up. Um, Mars in Scorpio. <laughs> So Mars and Scorpio. So Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio. It does really well there. Um, and so, you know, it can be a little, a little intense in, in certain ways. <laughs> Uh, so Mars and Scorpio, one of the biggest things that I see on that psychological and emotional level is that um, they tend to, instead of expressing their anger overtly, they tend to kind of shut down or separate themselves from the situation. And usually there's a fear of like expressing their anger. Um, sometimes it can be because they had an experience where anger was expressed in a way that was over the top in childhood and that was traumatic for them, or they let loose and they um, went too far when they got angry and they did something that they regret. 
or that they, they you know, uh, later regretted or they said something that they didn't mean. They can be very vicious, you know, that scorpion sting. Um, and so a lot of times, instead of getting angry, they'll kind of separate themselves. And that's, that's okay as long as they have an outlet and as long as they're addressing it once they pull down. Um, but harboring that, they harbor resentment a lot, um, you know, that energy with the Mars and Scorpio. And so, and they might not even realize that they're doing that, right? And that can be very toxic to the body. So holding on to toxic emotions, um, especially I would say resentment, um, you know, anger, jealousy, that type of thing, but especially that resentment energy because they're not expressing it. They're not kind of getting their just desserts or whatever they need. Right. Uh, um, and for them, you know, um, when they're, when you separate yourself as a Mars and Scorpio, if you're somebody that tends to do that, instead of expressing your anger directly, um, use that time to do something physical, right? Focus really intense, intensely on some sort of intense focus physical activity. And that's going to be a really good outlet for that. Um, you know, another thing with Mars and Scorpio people is when they do express their anger there, they can be kind of ruthless. <laughs> And it can yeah, be a little what? over the top. Yeah. So it, it can be a healthy thing for them to separate first. Um, but in terms of like their immune system, they tend to have pretty healthy immune systems. I would say that like emotions and um, kind of maybe even overdoing things and taking things to excess or to extremes would be the thing that would deplete their immune system and deplete their vitality. It's like they overdid it and did way too much mm -hmm. and it kind of runs them down and wears them down. They tend to be very obsessive about the actions that they take. They tend to take something, run with it, take it to extremes. And those extremes are kind of the danger with the Mars and Scorpio. Um, and, but their immune systems do tend to be, you know, pretty, um, high functioning, I would say from my experience with uh, Mars and Scorpio people. So that's not a huge issue. Um, but yeah, I would say when there's like a psychological upset or an emotional upset that could throw things off. So this is another one, all the water signs, you really have to be careful, um, with right. Mars and the water signs with your emotions. You want to focus more on mood and your emotional equilibrium as opposed to other things in order to enhance your immunity. Yeah. Well, and I know too that for Scorpio, also being over the um, excretory system, it, it yeah, makes sense, right? It's like, it's it's the same, right? You can, you got to take care of that because it's like a volcano. Like, you know, you're going to get like bubbly gut and then it's just going to be not good from there. Like it is going to come out eventually. So it's like making sure that you're not eating things that are consistently inflaming your body or putting you in these IBS states. I do think that IBS could be something that shows up a little bit more here, but. And know, with Mars and Virgo, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you, you definitely wanna be mindful of that, you know, because that's that's gonna be on your, your radar. Because one way or another, Mars and Scorpio is looking for that evolution to go from one state to the other, however powerfully that is gonna happen. And that happens in the, in the body as well. Yeah, absolutely. And to that um, point, you know, the colon is ruled obviously by Scorpio. And so like ulcerative colitis and you know, inflammation of the colon, things like that can be um, more prevalent with that energy. Um, and so, yeah, you do want to be very careful about what you're eating and, and toxic burden too. Like that's... Ugh. Toxins will cause inflammation, especially in the colon, if you're eating foods that are not good for you, if you're not, you know, taking care of yourself. So um, I have some remedies that I could tell that people probably wouldn't want to do for that. But. <laughs> I'm like, so just start for now with some senna and no resentment. That's yeah. a good place. Yeah. Don't. Uh, so that's the same thing, though. They tend to harbor toxic emotions and they tend to harbor toxins in their body. And yeah. that you know, all sorts of different issues. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's a very good point. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Mars in Sag. Mars and Sag. This is another one where there's not like a lot of like crazy health issues. You know, Mars does well in the fire signs. I mean, that's just the fact of it. <laughs> yeah. But this is another one that's really good for um, um, athleticism and, you know, physical activity, um, competition a little bit, but more for the adventure of it. So this is somebody who would want to go climb that mountain, who would want to go skydiving, who would want to go do something more extreme in terms of like their physical activity, something extreme and adventurous. They, you want to do it in a new place, in a new scenario, in a new situation. This would be a bad time for a Mars and Sagittarius person um, because they crave that type of physical activity. They want to go climb that mountain. They want to go do 
that thing. Right. And, um, and they need that. So I think right now finding ways to be adventurous in, in your physical activity, your physical expression in your own home. You know, if you are somebody, I like the, the rock climbing example, um, <laughs> cause it's very Sagittarian to me at least, um, in terms of just like extreme adventure sports. Um, but like you could build, build a climbing wall, you make that your physical activity, right? Do something like that. Fig figure out ways how you can do that at home right now, because I think this would be a really diff difficult time for Mars in Sagittarius. And they get kind of depressed or depleted when they're not having that sense of adventure, when they're not able to yeah. move about freely. Um, and so this could be actually a very depressing time for Mars and, and Sagittarius people. So yeah. thinking about ways to counteract that, right? Thinking about ways that you can um, maybe, you know, it's more physical with Mars, but even mental exploration, that could yeah. be something that you could do that could be helpful right now. Um, it, that one's a little tricky. I feel like the Mars and Sagittarius people that are going to be the ones having the hardest time in terms of the Mars placements, at least with the, the restrictions and the lockdown and all sure. that. Well, in, in that Sag energy, you know, naturally having the Jupiter component, it's like if they get bored enough, you know, this opens a nice gate for all things that affect the liver. How about yes. alcohol? How about a little bit of extra alcohol because it's Jupiter? Or how about a little extra, you know, whatever? And it's Mars, so I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go buy it. I'm going to go indulge in it, you know, whatever that looks like. So I feel like boredom is like just a curse health-wise of this particular placement if they are not able to take that mars and be ex expansive about it the poor liver is going to suffer <laughs> yeah and they really do need to take care of their livers they can have like a lot of liver issues that's uh, another very good point so this is another one where you'd want to focus on detox and you know supporting yeah. the liver and that type of thing um but yeah it, usually it's not a huge issue um but right now there could be access i, yeah. I think you're right about that yeah, because it's, I, you know, I feel like everybody's Mars, except for maybe like Mars and Pisces and Mars and Taurus. Like it, Mars is trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is so, so interesting. And there's only so much of your house for Mars and Sag, you know, it's like, well, what's next? So I guess it's time to do the gutters for sure. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Mars in Capricorn. Oh, and he's so happy here. So happy. I love Mars and Capricorn. Um, Mars and Capricorn is a really great placement because it's a really great energy for initiating something and initiating it for the long term, understanding the value of delayed gratification and that things take time. They'll start something and they'll put in the work to follow through with it and to carry it out. And that's a really great thing. Um, you know, Mars and Capricorn though can be uh, prone to a lot of skin issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so inflammation of the skin, you know, having acne, or um, eczema and just all sorts of things like that I've seen with a lot of Mars and Capricorn people. And so when they're under a lot of stress in particular, um, that can flare up or, you know, having a lot of strong emotions, a lot of anger, that type of thing. And also the food that you eat is going to be really important because that's going to detox through the skin if you're eating things that are not necessarily good for you. Um, so that's kind of part of that. But for their immune system, it tends to be pretty steady um, and pretty consistent. You know, they tend to have a very strong state immune system. It's not like a lot of ups and downs and all over the place like some of the other signs might be like cancer would be the opposite of that, right? And there's, it kind of ebbs and flows and you're, it's very connected to their mood and their emotional state. Whereas Capricorn, you know, it's a little bit more stable, a little bit more steady. Um, I would say that if they're working towards some sort of goal, they need to have a goal. They need to have goals. <laughs> Yeah. It'll depress, depleted, and it'll deplete their immune system if they do not have goals and plans that they're working toward and that they're aspiring to. So that would be something if you're feeling um, kind of depleted or kind of um, off with everything that's been going on, figure out what you can do, figure out a goal for the future and start working toward that. That would be a good, I think, uh, psychological remedy for that Mars in, in uh, Capricorn energy for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And if you've got skin stuff going on, uh, address it. That is your first line of defense, mm -hmm. right? It is the first line that we've got in the immune system from the outside world. So it's like you want to definitely get and be on top of that, whatever that looks like um, in how you treat that. But that is, I think, a big deal. And the other thing I just kind of think of in general, it doesn't, I don't think it impacts until you have an issue, but making sure your teeth are good, which is fun because it's actually a very good like goal, right? And there's a system and there's a process. You got to brush, you got to floss, and there's the next thing. And I think as long as this particular placement, especially depending on where it's at in the chart, um, 
takes care of that, when it's not taken care of, the immune system fires right away. It's just yeah. kind of the gums, the teeth. It's that is like nine one one to the immune system. I feel like. Oh yeah, and, and there's plenty of like research to support that too. Like your the certain bacteria in your um, mouth is correlated to like heart disease and things like yeah. that. But um, if you've ever seen the documentary uh, uh, Root Cause, where it talks about like root canals, have you ever seen that? No, but now we know we have to watch Root, root Cause. Yeah, definitely wow. everyone watch that um, because I had some cavitations and that cause a lot of issues. And when I got those resolved, that um, helped a lot. So, you know, the jaw bones, the teeth, all of that has a lot to do with the function of your entire body and sure. your immune system. And a lot of people, you know, who have had root canals have had a lot of health issues as a result of this. Not everyone, but a lot of people. And sure. so there's a documentary called Root Cause. You can find it on Iconic. I don't know where else you can find it right now because they pulled it actually from oh. Netflix because the American Dental Association got really angry about it. Um, <laughs> But it was on Netflix for a short time. Um, but anyway, I'm like digressing here. <laughs> yeah, but now we have something else to watch. In Capricorn, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just brush your teeth. Make sure you do that and you should be good to go. Yeah. Good, okay, Mars in Aquarius. Uh, Mars and Aquarius. So Aquarius rules the electrical circuitry of the body, right? Um, and so it's the communication between all the different body parts, the nerves and, and all of that, the nerve impulses. And so, you know, there can be um, some issues there. I would say some dysregulation of the nervous system or especially the electrical circuitry of the body where it could be overactive or overstimulated. And so you can see things like neuralgia um, or even things like fibromyalgia where there's like inappropriate nerve responses or even an immune response attacking the nerves, which is what they think fibromyalgia might be. Um, and so you can see things like that. And so this can actually be kind of a difficult energy. Um, you know, you want to, first off, with any of the air signs with Mars, you want to have a mental outlet. <laughs> you know, you want to, um, you know, keep your mental activity in check. I would say that this would be a really good one um, in particular for social interaction and connecting with groups of people, which is something that you can't really do in real time right now. But even right. the internet is ruled by Aquarius, right? So connecting with groups of people over the internet can kind of get your mood uplifted. It can get you um, excited to initiate new action. It can get you motivated. This is another one where you can get really motivated behind social causes, especially humanitarian right. types of causes and pursuits. And now would be a great time to get involved with something like that, that can help your community, that can help humanity during a time when everything is changing. You get really fired up about that it can boost your mood. It can get, you know, uh, it can get things moving for you again. I think that would be yeah. a really great thing. Um, and then, you know, Mars rules, or sorry, Aquarius rules like the shins. <laughs> and so they can be prone to injuries of the shins and things like that. That's not necessarily having to do with the immune system, but it's just kind of something to look out for and, and be aware of. Um, and yeah, I, I'm trying to think of what else we would say about Mars in Aquarius. I feel like that's that's a lot of it there. <laughs> they need a lot of yeah. social activity and they need to do new and exciting things all the time. They need to do yeah. things in new and exciting ways and they need to do it in their own way. One of the things that can be really hard for Mars and Aquarius people that can be very depleting for them is, um, you know, if they feel like they don't have the freedom to move about the world as, as they please or to do things as they, as they wish, that their individual freedom is being restricted yeah. in some way. And that's happening right now. And so this yeah. would, I would say in alignment with that Mars and Sagittarius, this would probably be another one that would be the hardest right now. It's because like, you're not able to do the things that you want to do in the way that you want to do them. You're not, you don't have yeah. that freedom that you normally have. Um, so you need to find a new outlet, find a cause, fight for that cause, right? That would be a good way to shift that energy in a way that's more appropriate. Yeah. And I think this, this is definitely a placement too, I think is having to do a lot of acceptance of things because man, I don't know how many clients I have that have this placement and they are runners, right? And they love the cardio of all of that, but now they're runners with masks. And that is not up their alley. Don't tell me what to do, right? It's very much so bumping up against that. But getting that cardio going is so good for this placement, I think. But it's interesting to see the way the social and the medical aspects can come together here, you yeah. know? Absolutely. And that makes sense too, that a lot of them would be runners and, you know, the circulatory system would be important because when you're looking at a sign, you're always looking at its opposition too. And then the opposition yeah. to that would be Leo. <laughs> so they want to get their heart pumping and their circulation going. And I mean, that helps too, like with, 
you know, the electrical circuitry of the body, the flow of electricity and the energetics yeah. of the body. That's something also that they really need to take care of for their immune system. They need to look at the energetics of their body. Um, maybe even doing things like um, energetic forms of healing, you know, going to see some sort of energy healer or Reiki healer or using mm, electromagnetic yeah. frequencies for healing. Uh, those things can be really uplifting to the immune system. You could even use something like if you have a practitioner nearby who has like a microcurrent that can help reduce inflammation and boost the immune system. Electricity, technology, using technology, technology. <laughs> to boost the immune system. Yeah, do all of your, your medical appointments over telemed now. You'll probably be thriving. The rest of us are trying to figure it out. <laughs> That's true too, yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. a little better with that. I know, right? Okay, let's do Pisces. So Mars in Pisces. This is a challenging position for, for Mars a little bit. This would probably be the most challenging position for Mars in terms of health. Um, you know, yeah. like the pathological aspect with Mars is either Mars in um in uh, Pisces or Mars with Neptune, because it, like I said before, it confuses the immune system, it depletes the immune system. Um, you know, when you have Mars in Pisces, <laughs> You can have a lot of issues with um, allergies, which is just a, mis a, a misfire of the immune system. Your immune system is attacking certain foreign proteins that are not necessarily harmful um, or that are not as harmful as you know, your body is reacting to them as they are. Um, you have uh, autoimmune conditions are very common with Mars and Pisces, Mars, Neptune aspects. Um, this is one of those energies where, like I mentioned before, people who have this, oftentimes they had an experience in childhood where Mm -hmm. they there was a first off just a miss like a confusion around anger like anger was misdirected and it was confusing like how anger was expressed in their early childhood so they didn't get a good example or a good model of how to express anger and deal with it appropriately the other thing too is that they usually feel like they were beaten down and they didn't necessarily um, have the ability to stand up for themselves or no matter how hard they felt like they were fighting for themselves it was to no avail and they never sure. got their way they never won they never had a victory in their childhood when it comes to that expression of anger. And so this can uh, translate in adulthood to first off, just like not having an ability to stand up for yourself um, and having a depleted dysfunctional immune system. It could be immune, your immune system is weak, your immune system is responding to things inappropriately, you can have an overreactive immune system like autoimmune conditions, all spectrum of things. Also more prone to viruses, infections, illnesses in general, that's Neptune. Uh, mold and fungal infections that can be a Neptunian thing. This causes a lot of issues. Um, the thing I would say is specifically you need to activate your Mars um, and that's going to be through intentional physical activity. They tend to like more creative, flowy uh, physical forms of physical activity, spiritually driven or spiritually oriented physical activity. Those things can be really great. Um, also, you know, utilizing their imagination and visualizing their immune yes. system, healing itself, that can be super powerful. And um, that energy of learning to stand up for themselves, the one thing that can activate their Mars um, that I have found that works really well is fighting for a cause or fighting for someone less fortunate or a group of people less fortunate. That's that charitable energy. So they have this very intense compassion for others and they tend to have a much easier time putting themselves in somebody else's shoes and standing up for them than they do standing up for themselves. But that can activate something in them where they can learn through that experience of standing up for somebody else who they feel like needs their help. Through that activation, they can learn to stand up for themselves. And that, even though it seems unrelated, can actually help to yeah boost the immune system. And I found that time and time again, like a lot of my, I work a lot with chronic illness because that's my experience. And a lot of these people have these same issues um, where they couldn't stand up for themselves. They don't stand up for themselves and their body's defenses are not standing up for themselves. Yeah. And that's something that I've seen as well. And I always feel like this is such a nice placement for an active spiritual awakening because they can literally in this position rely a lot more on their intuition as to what is going on if they'll tap into it right like sometimes i think small symptoms can show up that would easily be brushed off and if this placement will use that mars energy to tap into the intuition they can say well hold on um I, I wasn't concerned about this yesterday and all of a sudden this is like super on my mind or, you know, things like that. So it's the position that I feel like is benefits full personhood from like an active kind of spiritual awakening. When you said visioning, I'm like, oh my God, yeah, this is like 
prime for this particular placement. And these are also our horse therapy friends, right? Yeah, yeah. And in, in general too, like Pisces and Virgo energy, they tend to love animals. <laughs> yeah. Those those are the two most common. By the way, I've seen with like Virgo sons and Pisces sons, they're the most common like vegetarians and vegans. <laughs> Just as like a side note there, because they, they tend to really love animals and care about animals. Um, but yeah, that, that horse therapy, that could be a really good thing. Animal therapy in general, standing up for animal welfare, like that yeah. could be your cause. Um, a horse, standing up for horses. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because like you said, sometimes we don't think that actually going out and doing and being about something has that much of an impact. And that is insane. Uh, everything that I'm doing has an impact on my health all the way around. You know what I mean? So at every turn, I'm trying to give it the best possible shot to be healthy, to be well, to bring the anxiety down so that it's only having to fight what it needs to fight as opposed to, because it, Pisces is an energy too, that because it walks between the worlds, um, it can fight things we can't see or things that we think are there. And it's like, why manufacture drama or things that are not really there? You know, we're wanting to give it the best shot possible. So I also think some grounding for them, like in their horse therapy is beautiful, right? It just allows the in-between, the world's level compassion to happen in a more grounded way that regrounds them to say, oh, wait, that's maybe not real. Yeah, absolutely. And and this is one where they, they can kind of, their imaginations can get the better of them. They can run wild with things. And even when it comes to, like you mentioned, they can like intuitively, they'll pick up, oh, there's this symptom that I'm having or this thing that I'm experiencing. Sometimes that, that can actually be a negative thing. Their imaginations will get the better of them. And all of a sudden, like they you have a deadly disease that they don't actually have. And you can literally think yourself sick um, yeah. and imagine these worst possible case scenarios. And it can create and reinforce this pattern in your brain and your body and your nervous system that can contribute to further illness and that's a big thing especially with the the Mars in Pisces people so um, being and tapping into that intuition, but also looking at things, like you said, grounding and looking at things in a way that's more realistic and saying, is this real or is this my imagination running wild? Am I just being hypersensitive to what I'm feeling right now in my body? Or is this something that I actually need to be concerned about? Like maybe even having a, a person in your life that's more grounded that right. you can kind of bounce these things off of. Um, that And also Mars in, in Virgo too is like a hypochondriac energy, I should yeah. mention. He's too. So they, He's too, yes. Yeah. So um, those are those are things that you kind of need to be aware of with those the Mars and Pisces and, and Mars and Virgo, I would say too. Yeah, absolutely. And the only other thing I think here that's just kind of coming to mind is because the hypochondria can come up, then what happens is we end up with an immune system loaded with different kinds of medications and remedies, and some are counteracting each other. So I really think the grounded person in there would kind of can it's like you know what you really just need tea you don't need like seven kinds of tea today or you know whatever it is. so it's not like you know excessive because then it the balance is not there so all of the placements have their challenges but they also have where they can bring it into full success and actually support the immune health and the biggest piece of that I think it, it brings us back fully around to stress to the anxiety yeah. what is the content I'm consuming and then how am I responding to that yeah, absolutely. And especially right now, and like that's not the only thing you look at, like just Mars for the immune system, right? You would look at the whole picture of the chart. Right. And so you would want to look at things like, you know, do are they prone to anxiety? Are they prone to um, burnout? Are they prone to all of these things? Are they prone to like their imaginations running wild? Are they prone to cynicism? Are they prone to like... Yeah. Looking at things more pessimistically, or are they more optimistic, right? These are all going to paint a picture, and these, these are all going to show you what you might want to work on and what you might want to enhance, <laughs> because yeah. it's already really good. And yeah, right now, I mean, we're being bombarded with, uh, social media is like a toxic wasteland right now. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's like you you can't get away from it if you're like, especially on Facebook. I've just gotten off of Facebook. I'm not even doing that right now because it's just so much. And even people who are not normally pessimistic, who are not normally prone to anxiety can be driven to it during this time. And so I think that's important. Your mental health is going to be the most important thing right now. Yeah. Well, and really even that's why I think this video and our talk is going to stay valid for time because even beyond this, we're going to go back into the world, whatever that looks like. And it's mm -hmm. like, 
how are you? Right? Like really, how are you? Yeah. You know, and, and what are you consuming? And also I think the other part of that is um, what are you doing to make sure that you're adding something good out there as well or something useful? Right, because sometimes even the treacherous news is useful, even though it doesn't feel the best. It's like, ah, that's not, I don't love that. But is it useful? So what are you taking yourself out there and doing and adding to this as well? We're coming to an Aquarian territory. If you know things, if you have a skill, if you're a good researcher, if whatever, use what you've got to come add to us, because that is going to add to your health and your wellness from tip, tip to toe as well. Yeah, absolutely. And now's the time to do it. <laughs> yeah, now, especially while people are collaborating every five minutes. If you know stuff, just <laughs> put it yeah. in the comment section. Yeah, this has been awesome, I think. And I hope that everybody out there is able to grab your chart and start to think about what your experience with your Mars placements specifically have been throughout your lifetime. And if you start to see some patterns, maybe of things that we talked about here, you know, you can consider that in a, in a lifetime worth of healing, really. But also at this time where we're kind of beefing and bulking up these immune systems, just so we can go out and have a walk safely. You know, I think that that would be really incredible. And of course, Heather does, does medical astrology so she's definitely somebody to have in your your toolkit if you're looking to to get well be well oh thank you yeah <laughs> and thank you so much for having me on here this has been fun and i think this is yeah a really useful tool for people to kind of start looking into um you don't even have to really know about medical astrology if you just look at your chart and your tendencies and your habits and how that impacts you on a psychological emotional like holistic level understanding that and like embracing your strengths and working on overcoming your challenges that's going to improve your physical health too you don't even have to know about the medical astrology component so um you know i think astrology is a very useful tool because everything is connected and it shows how everything is connected yeah, absolutely. Well, I super am happy that you came and we got to talk about this because I love when we can do a video where, like you said, we leave people empowered to never have to come out and spend a dime. Grab your chart, start to learn. You've got answers right there. So we've given you something else tonight that maybe will, will help encourage you to, to find your way for sure. That's what astrology I think is about. So thank you guys so much for watching. We have loved being here. We've loved having you. I can't wait to see you in class. I can't wait to see you in the monthly the weeklies and everything else and of course definitely go check out heather's channel as well all of her details will be in the description box down below and i'm sure at some point we'll collaborate again because there's just so much to talk about so thank you guys so much i love you and i will see you in the next video bye everybody